And this question extends these same principles, I think, into the workplace. The crisis of stress in the workplace continues to escalate at an alarming rate. An article this week in the New York Times reported that over $300 billion is lost to U.S. business and industry each year in health care costs and missed work days due to the debilitating effects of stress. The problem, say many business people, is that they have to work too hard, too many days, too many hours a day, and too many days a week with too much pressure just to pay their bills. What changes would Maharshi recommend in the workplace and in the entire economic system to make business a more human-friendly profession? In other words, how can people make the money they need to have a life of security and comfort without ruining their health and their life doing it? Take a lesson from the animals. <laughs> Where is money in the world of monkeys? And <laughs> Where is money in the world of ants or elephants? <laughs> It's a big misnomer. It's a network of ignorance, only network of ignorance, only network of ignorance. Vedic system, <laughs> Vedic system of earning is stimulating total natural law in our desire to have anything. And total natural law obeys our commandment. Total natural law obeys our commandment in the Vedic system of Culturing the mind. You culture the mind and take your awareness to the source of thought where from that field of unmanifest nothingness the memory of everything wakes up in your awareness and then Infinite creative intelligence is supporting your desire, supporting your action, supporting your behavior. Train the mind. This is transcendental meditation, transcendental meditation, transcendental meditation, transcendental meditation to train the mind in order to consciously start a thought from the from that field of the unified field self referral unified field the field of total natural law within oneself from there Fulfill the desire, from there, fulfill the desire, fulfill the desire. It's a different philosophy. It's a different philosophy. It's a philosophy of slavery. When you educate a man to do this and you will give him so much money and he'll do this, and you give more money and you'll do this, and you give more money and he'll do this. This is a science of slavery, a philosophy of dependence. You are most obedient servant. What a fine thing. I am, sir, your most obedient servant. You remain a servant of the person for a few thousand uh, coins every month and you can buy your fruit here and there and there. You can 
train your mind so that the total natural law which runs the universe is helpful to fulfill your desires. And the proof of it is in yogic flying. Proof of it is in yogic flying. You invite the power of gravity at that moment, and power of gravity says, yes, sir, I am here for you. In with your invitation to the power of gravity, and immediately the power of gravity serves to your call. If you want the body to lift up, body immediately lifts up. This is the proof, this is the proof, this is the proof. We are not talking fanciful words. Vedic education is a practical field of education. In the practical field of education, and we have seen what the present education is. Pre present education is to increase ignorance. <laughs> to increase ignorance more than knowledge. Vedic education is increase knowledge all the time, all the time, all the time, till you have access to total knowledge of creativity, infinite creativity of natural law. It's a different thing, but that is our offer. Take it and enjoy, or you don't take it today, tomorrow you'll take it, third day you'll take it. It's very good these, these times of the, of the press conferences, bring out these these fine points of interest, huh? they are very good points of interest. <laughs>